welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, May 3rd, 2018. I'm Yvesta Boynes with the details. Tax evaders here are being urged to make use of the remaining tax amnesty period, which ends on Monday, May 15, 2018. The incentive was among a number of fiscal measures which were announced by Finance Minister Camilla Gonzalez in his 2018 budget presentation on February 5th. Earlier today, SVG TV's Nikita Tony caught up with the Comptroller of the Inland Revenue Department, who gave an overview of how his department has administered the initiative and how the public has been cooperating thus far. On Wednesday, February 15th, a tax amnesty window was implemented in St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a means of giving tax evaders the chance to get their taxes up to date. Noting that he is satisfied with the number of persons who have already taken advantage of the initiative, Comptroller of the Inland Revenue Department, IRD, Kelvin Pompey, told SVG TV News that persons have been requesting for an extension of the initiative. Pompey added that with the amnesty set to end on Monday, May 15th, the Delinquent taxpayers should ensure that their taxes are settled so as to escape any penalties and additional interest. Close to 150, uh, going closer to 200 persons um, visiting the department or calling and inquiring about their tax balances um, based on, on, on the amnesty. We would have um, collected monies, we would have had uh, um, quite a few persons who have set up arrangements to, to, to pay persons who owed considerable amount of monies and at this point they are still engaged in um, procuring the necessary finances uh, looking at that in terms of considering um, whether or not the, 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 the of course the necessary um, governmental department policy makers um, we are in discussion to make a determination as to whether or not there would be an extension. The Inland Revenue Department Comptroller said thus far there has been a high level of compliance from property owners which he said is very much welcomed. Seeing um, many persons who have not um, paid over the years coming in and paying or as I said setting up arrangements to pay. We are in the process of preparing our 2018 um, notices, property tax notices, and I think it really is a good time for property owners to call at the department to inquire and to make the necessary um, payments or, or, or to update their, their tax account. Of persons who for years have not paid um, property taxes and as we have said we do intend um, to take the necessary action against um, tax defaulters especially property owners making an appeal to chronic tax defaulters to use the next two weeks to work with the inland revenue department to straighten out their taxes pompey said that the department is positioned to ensure that these persons are prosecuted for tax evasion if they fail to do so to do that we would be um, embarking on a program um, hitherto never seen um, in St. Vincent from the tax department because it would um, require or include measures against persons in terms of, of their, their, their assets, property, um, finance, monies in bank accounts and of course also imprisonment because we would be sending through the necessary documentation to the di Director of Public Prosecution for him to open tax evasion cases. With just two weeks remaining before the tax amnesty window comes to an end, taxpayers here are being urged to take the opportunity to ensure that they are in compliance with the tax regulations of this country and to get their taxes up to date. Nikita Tony reporting for SVJ TV News. The opposition New Democratic Party is questioning if the ruling Unity Labour Party administration is prostituting or exploiting the climate resilience levy to gain revenue. In Parliament today, Opposition Senator Kay Bacchus Batiste accused the ULP administration of not genuinely caring and tackling the issues of climate change. Member of Parliament for Central Kingston, St. Clair Lecoq, also questioned some of the definitions in the levy. MP for West Kingston, Daniel Cummins, said the government need to use the finances for climate change wisely. In fact, the attitude of this government has been likened by some to what is known as climate change prostitution. And I will define what an operator in the field, Hayden Billingy, says about climate change prostitutes. 
climate change prostitutes are persons or countries who do not genuinely care about the phenomena of, of um, climate change, do not really understand the issues or even care to use the climate change momentum. To, but they use the climate change momentum to leverage money for development of their countries. They will frame every project around climate change for a chance of wringing money out of taxpayers. And we are warned to beware of climate change prostitutes. So, I say this because we do not get the feel in this country that the ULP is dealing with the symptoms of climate change, the real problems. If we want to encourage local tourism, if we want to encourage local tourism, there's a case for exempting nationals and do not treat our people as visitors in their own homeland. Because in fact, we are not. I think there is a case made for that. Yeah. So I want to, to say that I, I will exclude Vincentians, either on mainland or going to the Grenadines, or vice versa, as not qualifying to be so defined as visitor in their own home country. Significant implications for having the electricity supply in the ground. So that in the event of a storm, you don't have what's happening up the island with all of these even Puerto Rico suffering, not being able to restore power in a reasonable time. It costs a little bit more money up front, but it saves us in the long run. And to me, that's the kind of initiative I would want to see some of the climate resistance, uh, resilience fund going into. Preventative activities that your country could be able to boast after a serious storm. The tourists could come back in the next week because we're up and running. We have electricity. We have this. We have that. That's what, to me, that's what it should be about. That's what resilience talks about. Minister of Finance and Sustainable Development, Camilla Gonzalez, says while he does not agree with all that the opposition argued about, he values their input as there were several corrections made. He also made it clear that the levy will not apply to per person, but per room. Minister of Labor, Sabotob Caesar, also rebuts the accusation of climate change prostitution leveled at his government. So the bill before honorable members has been amended um, or corrected more properly in the, in the way that it was originally intended, so that on page four, I believe honorable members have received the updated page, uh, but there are two edits on page four. One is to the definition of transient visitor, and that definition just removes this limitation on 12-year-olds and so on, because you're not charging by the visitor, you're charging by the room. And the second edit in uh, section three, subsection two, paragraph three, subsection two, says that the climate resilience levy shall be paid on each room at a rate of $8 per night, um, as opposed to, as it was originally stated, um, each individual, each transient visitor. So those are the changes, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would indicate as well that I anticipate one more change, but I would like to, to hear um, in, over the course of the debate um, when it should commence, because originally uh, in my budget presentation, I said it would commence on May 1st. Obviously, May 1st has already passed, and whether or not we should com commence it 30 days from the, con from the conclusion of this debate, um, which is what I propose, or if honorable members have a desire to extend that date slightly beyond 30 days, um, I'd be willing to hear the debate and we can make that amendment when, the, when we convene into a committee of the whole. I am shocked that an honorable member of this house would stand here and say that persons on this side of the house alleging us as being climate change prostitutes when what we are doing is what other countries have already done and are working on and are addressing. Talk to the people in Tortola. Talk to the people in Virgin Garda and Anagada and Anguilla 
Talk to the people in Roseau, in Dominica, and the students who just went back, who lived this experience. And Mr. Speaker, I'm going to spend time on it. You know why? We can't allow persons in this honorable house to make very light of such an important subject matter because there are young people listening, there are students listening, and this is a serious parliament. And we must make serious our discussions. Chief Executive Officer of the Local Tourism Authority, Glen Beach, said there is a need for more education on all aspects of the tourism sector to help advance it. Beach told SVG TV News that while he looks forward to the work to be done by the Maritime and Hospitality Institute, the public needs to be better educated on the career opportunities available in the tourism sector. Before I left office as the Minister of Tourism, after we did the Tourism Development Project, one of the things I worked very hard to get in place before I left office was to make sure we have the Maritime and Hospitality Institute started. And it's completed now. Um, and that's one of the things I'm looking forward to from out there because they have lovely equipment to teach the culinary arts out at Diamond at the, at the new institute. So I, I think, listen, in terms of tourism, one of the things we've seen, and it's one of the issues I have also, I think there's still limited understanding of exactly what tourism is about and, and all the different facets within the industry that one can get involved in. And so I think it is something we still need to push educationally, I think, I think and I can be wrong and I'm subject to correction. There are too many parents who still feel that their, their, their child has to become a lawyer, a doctor, and an engineer. Um, and there's so many other areas out there, including one of which is tourism, to push the industry. The Tourism Authority CEO further encouraged those involved in the culinary arts to try the dishes of different cultures, adding that many local foods are considered as delights by visitors. Try something new. It might not sound good, but just think other people from different cultures, when they come here, the things we eat sound nasty to them too, or it might not be the most um, appetible. Not even appetite, I don't think that's a word, but something that's savory for our palate, for their palates. And, and so it, it, we have to experiment. We have to appreciate different cultures and what they do. I mean, in India, cows are sacred. They don't eat beef. Mm -hmm. We eat it like nothing here. And so it's a, an appreciation for different things out there. Try it. You might not like it, but at least you tried it and you can say you did not like it. And I think these are some of the things we need to push. Um, the menus, I mean, buljao is something delicious, fried fish, breadfruit, things that we take for granted. A lot of people consider to be succulent and, and, taste, and tasty, and, and, that's, and these are some of the things. I still think, in my opinion, we still have too much of an inferiority complex, and it's something we need to push. Employers here are being encouraged to ensure that their employees and workplaces are safe at all times. The appeal comes from economist at the Caribbean Development Bank, Ronald James. James, who was speaking at a recently held Safety in the Workplace seminar at the NIS conference room, said it is essential that employers ensure that they have the necessary protective gear and secure environment. So what is obvious from the foregoing narrative about how economies grow is that labor is an important factor in the production process. But in order for that labor to maximize its output, that labor must be healthy. And it must be in a, a working at a safe workplace, whether physically, mentally, or socially. The International Labor Organization and the World Health Organization declare that health and safety at work is aimed at the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental, and social well-being of workers in all occupations, the prevention among workers of leaving work due to health problems caused by their working conditions, the protection of workers in the employment from risk resulting from factors adverse to health, the placing and maintenance of the worker in an occupational environment adapted to his or her physiological and psychological capabilities, and to summarize the adaptation of work to the person and of each person to their job. The CDB economist also highlighted the importance of investing in people and ensuring that they are motivated to perform their jobs efficiently. That investing in people is good for business. 
Human capital development is a prerequisite for a future-oriented development. Think Google, think Apple, think Microsoft, which are the leaders in, 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 um, in technology in the world today. This is why companies increasingly need qualified, motivated, and efficient workers who are able and willing to contribute actively to technical and organizational innovation. Healthy workers working in healthy working conditions are thus an important precondition for enterprises to work smoothly and productively. Increasing investment in human capital, capital therefore, seems like a natural way to increase firms' output. Policies that allow people to become better at their jobs will increase growth. As the St. Vincent Electricity Services Vinlec focuses on the theme, Safety Ties Us Together, during their 2018 Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month, employees are being reminded that their collective efforts will constitute a safety culture in the workplace. The reminder came from the company's environmental health and safety officer, Anthony Patterson, as he delivered remarks at the official launch of the Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month of Activities on Wednesday. Patterson said Vinlec continues to uphold the significance of safety and health in the workplace. We have measures that we, that we use, or we call them indi indicators. I think those are recently um, distributed or, or, or published. So when we talk about um, safety, and we often say this, safety is a team effort. And uh, we know team, T-E-A-M, stands for together everyone achieves more. All right, so we're, we're drawing on all those you know, ideas or concepts when it comes to uh, the safety ties us together theme. Safety at Vinlec and you know, incidents that will happen from time to time or in the context of our safety um, performance, it's important to have persons who are not only trained, but also have the right attitude. Patterson also stressed the need for persons to be both proactive and reactive when incidents occur. But suffice it to say that we have had one too many incidents, personal injuries, vehicle accidents, um, accidents involving members of the public. You can't tell who's going to have an accident tomorrow or next week. But there are tools that we can use um, in the field of analytics to help us know or get an idea as to where we are most vulnerable. So there's hindsight, and we learn from the things that happened in the past, but there's also foresight and insight. And as we look at our data, as we look at what has, you know, areas of, of vulnerability, we can better analyze where we are and we are better in a position to offset or to stave off incidents, prevent them from happening, avoid them totally. As Fisherman's Day draws closer, a number of fisher folk here have been airing their concerns about the day's celebration. SVG TV News caught up with some fishermen and vendors at the Kingston Market on Wednesday and they said the activities on Fisherman's Day, May 21st, should be held in Kingston instead of Kaliakwa. I went Fisherman's Day about, about five times already and I never left Kaliakwa. I think Tong is the fittest place to keep that. Because this is the main market, you have a proper place to boat dock up and everything. And then you have the people who come from Liwa that pay two money. People who come from country, they pay one money. But we're located for everybody. Because the Liwa people, they come from Leeward, they are paid to Tong and then pay to Kelakwa. So catering for everybody, if you got it in Tong, everybody pay one, one passage. And it's the best place, it's cleaner, best, best facility for your, your boats and everybody. Kelakwa not in or nothing. When you go to Kelakwa, you can enjoy yourself. Because, you know, it was not good, you can't tie your boat. You have to left your boat all out of sea. You can't come to land sometimes. Kingston, Kingston, a better place. Also looking at you know to this year to like to see Fisherman's Day, you know like how it used to be in the old time. So you could come to go on and like even purchase the fish and sell the fish a little cheaper, to, you know, to the consumers. So people and things could um, well enjoy that day. See, well, okay, this year day that we um, we fishermen celebrate and come like you gain something back. Market because it's clean and, and nice. You come in and you get your fish sell one time. Here. 
But when they out Kerala Kwan, you got to bungle up on one another out there for selfish. And out there, male, male police will sell all years, they're selfish out there. If they want to get it this day, hey, in the fish market, next day, they get it out there. But mix it up, one A, one A. Child to, 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 to everybody, but they always go in Kerala Kwan with it. When you out there, you have to be keep running when rain coming to shelter here there, and everywhere. Here is a big place. It have more shelter here than when you're in Kalakwa. And sometimes if you feel like staying a little bit late out Kalakwa, sometimes you don't get van to, to go where you go in. This year marks the 43rd anniversary of the Fisherman's Day celebrations under the theme From Our Ridges into the High Seas, Our Nation We Feed with the slogan, Cleaner Reef, Healthy Fish to Eat. Meantime, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Sabota Caesar, said more opportunities are being made available to local fisher folk, with a record amount of fish products ex being exported to Miami on Wednesday. Speaking at a ceremony held at the Argyle International Airport, Minister Caesar said 36,000 pounds of fish, produ fish produced were shipped to Miami, consisting of yellowfin, tuna, and conch. He said, thanks to the AIA, SVG can take advantage of markets which were once unavailable due to a lack of air access. And uh, because of the absence of the Argyle International Airport and international air access, many of the persons within the fishing community, they did not see the investment into longline fishing as one that is practical. In fact, there were several persons who decided to purchase fish. This fish was exported using a Merijet, but had to be transshipped to Trinidad and Tobago. And because of certain inefficiencies and mishaps as it pertains to timetabling, persons would have suffered significant losses. This is another opportunity for us to welcome the possibilities open to us as a people because of the establishment of the Argyle International Airport. The government minister further encouraged fisher folk and other stakeholders to take advantage of the opportunities being made available through the AIA. I want to encourage the fisher folk of St. Vincent and the Grenadines not to be left out of the opportunities which are presenting themselves. I know that several persons invested in small boats, but now we are seeing a huge opportunity for us to invest in long liners and for us to use the technology which is available to us to access international markets. It is this Bekwe Seafood Company also which is currently exporting live lobster all the way from Bekwe to, to Hong Kong via Miami International. And uh, this opportunity is open to persons who are operating all the other centers. I am aware that there are many young persons who have sought and obtained employment in this sector. And we are going to see significant growth continuing in, in the blue economy as we continue to harness the possibilities created by the Argyle International Airport. Thank you. Executive Director of Invest SVG, Annette Mark, said the shipment is a positive sign for SVG's export potential. Um, Bequay Seafood is a company that Invest SVG facilitated and we are really happy to be part of this moment and we will continue to work with um, Bequay Seafood as we go forward in the future. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to say that one of our mandated sectors is export development and we are taking this, this very seriously and working with, with we want to see this market grow and we look forward to seeing more of these, being here to see more fish go out on a weekly basis. And um, in closing I'd just like to say that you know I would like other persons around, other fishermen around, to see what is happening here and realize that this is a reality and that it, it, is, it is an opportunity for everybody. And we at Invest SVG, we're very willing to work along with you to ensure that you can get to this kind of capacity or even be a part of something like this. 
Although there are downsides to inclusive education, research suggests that the benefits far outweigh the risk. That's according to Chief Education Officer Beverly Neptune as she officially declared Child Month 2018 open. Child Month, which is observed annually in the month of May, will this year focus on the issue of inclusive education. Neptune noted that more and more countries around the world are actually moving towards inclusive education. Inclusion is considered to be a moral issue. It is ethical. It is legal. And certainly in many countries, it is a civil right. Different models of inclusive education. You can have partial inclusive education and you can have full inclusive education. I agree that it is an educational practice in which children with disabilities or special educational needs are educated in classrooms with children without disabilities. And while all of this sounds wonderful, we may wish to ask the question, does inclusion work? And if yes, does it work for all the children involved? The education officer said before one can examine the outcomes of inclusive education, the attitudes of all key players must be critically analyzed. Research suggests that there are many benefits to be derived from inclusion. Like everything else, it has its pros and it has its cons. Evidence is available to show that students with disabilities can achieve success in inclusive classrooms. Success is most likely though when general education is individualized and when the support in the classroom is available. Not only to the students must there be support, but there must be support for their teachers. There must be certain interventions at varying levels. These include curriculum modification, changes in teacher training, restructuring the way that classrooms are laid out.